My name is Sabrina Wallace, and my parents were both part of Space Force in 1969. Just happened to have a pretty crystal and a similar ship. Now, a lot of people like to say stuff. They don't necessarily like to come up and uh, help folks understand things that are difficult to understand. Because, you know, everybody's busy right now preparing for drone warfare. Electromagnetic drone warfare. We did it in Iraq in 1994. And, you know, the country's going to war one way or another. Whether or not it's going to be, you know, uh, our own people or something else. We have a serious learning deficiency in the United States. Whether or not it was engineered and designed. Um, I'm going to let other people talk about that. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you exactly what it is that you need to explain to your own children so that we can avoid the Mao style revolution I'm pretty sure is what they're actually getting at. And we're going to do that with education. So in getting started, who am I? My name is Sabrina Wallace. I am a child of an OSS family. And my family members are involved in black projects, SEPs, special access projects. So I am a BAER bloodline. And my grandfather is Bernard Heinrich Scheer. And that name is, I'm sure, right here. He married Helen Harding. And Helen Harding is directly related to Alphias Levi. My father was Stephen Garland Davis. My mother is Lynn Jean Shear. They are both secret Sempra Supra in 1969 working on Project Salus. I am a modified child due to the Menninger Foundation experimentation for human augmentation. Now, all that means is that I have scars that most people don't have for John von Neumann architecture. It's not brain and machine interface. It's body machine interface. That's impossible and it sounds what again? Mm -hmm. Hang in there. So here's the wedding list of my parents. Okay. okay. Here are the flight manifests out of Edgewood Arsenal from my great uncle, 6570th Army Chemical Corps. Dietrich to where? Texas, New York, North Korea. J just one's not good enough. Yeah, let me hold it still for you. Okay. Uncle Bobby here was involved with the Mothman projects and building vehicles for the men in black. Now, being interfaced with John von Neumann's scars is right under here. I see one there. And of course, I'm older now, but that's your heart. Okay. So this is body machine interface with an underground database called Nick Berlanga, which is IBM. So in my German class in high school, I spelled it wrong. Nick Berlanga, right there. Okay. Why does that matter? Because if people say stuff like this, they had better be able to show you evidence, viable proof, or else I wouldn't listen to them. So here's a little more documentation, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started with the intellectual discussion, okay? <clears throat> so here's my family, and Garland here, my grandfather, Garland Davis, a World War II Marine, Fort Meade, NSA, uh -huh. and first he married Elizabeth Kraft, but I think something with the DNA didn't take, so then he married my mother, and here I am. Okay, so I worked for a company. That was my parents and my great uncle. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. <laughs> my uncle, my great uncle is where I live. See, he's, he's uh, always been one of my favorite people. He's a very kind man. Oh, come up over. This time I had everything sitting out ahead of time. It's still there. Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm. It's all done. Okay. So, 
I have a totally different story than my parents. I was never told anything, not a thing. So I grew up and I wanted, and they told me nothing existed except what you could see. And I wanted to know what is all this electromagnetic stuff? I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. I was born in 1979. And if you talked about the aura, everybody shoved you in a corner and demanded you join their group of weird. And I was always sitting there like, you do realize it's a body part. And they're like, no, you're stupid. You have to have a religion. I never realized what I was. I didn't know why people acted so stupid. As in, why would you lie about a body part? And yet, <laughs> my parents were secret squirrels. That's four levels of law enforcement above anything that civilians see. And they're the SES, the secret elite, what? It's a secret elite service. And that's pretty much it. Once you're there, um, that's secret law enforcement, right? You know, you gotta go another level up. Okay, now you gotta go another level up. Are you serious, Brittany? Yeah, you gotta go another level up. Right, so I went ahead and went to work for a company out of Louisville, Kentucky called High Speed Access. And this is when they sent me my papers to work for them. You can see right there, HSA Corp, and that was their old address. What? This is the back end of Space Force. The actual back end of this country, I was one of two technicians to wire the state of Wisconsin from dial-up to broadband. So I'm very clear, L3 Harris, OC24, all the different ways that we handle with all sorts of intelligence, the NSA's PRISM program, all of it, including datagrams, packets. Network engineering is not the same as installing a cable modem. I have to work with the plant technician and the plant engineer. There's no one higher in a plant than that. And there was no one higher in that position than me other than the one dude. Yeah, I was 19. So. I'm going to now show you my resume so that as I continue here and people have really had nothing to say to me because I'm exactly who I'm telling you I am. Full body. Pardon my dirty foot. All right, so who's this chick? Let's see. IS Technical Services Professional, UW Whitewater, monitored campus network, various software packages, including WhatsApp Gold and the NMAPS, Network Vantage, HP OpenView, and brief interactions with Snort. Second shift operations included processing databases using PeopleSoft 8. Updated code and routers and switches. Work with Vizio to create fiber map of campus. Initiated training for WhatsApp Gold. Well, of course, I was watching a whole state. They're like, one little chunk. And when I went to the Network Operations Center in Louisville, boy, did I want to build me one of those. Network consultant at Omni Resources in Green Bay. Trouble OS conflicts, excuse me, troubleshot OS conflicts with proprietary company, developed software, assisted with Cisco Pix firewall stuff. Um, program assistant to Department of Corrections, Wales, Wisconsin, installed and implemented in-house tracking program for facility and maintenance department at Ethan Allen School for Boys. Developed databases and access and provided direction for Oracle implementation, troubleshot network and desktop issues within the departments. And the big job. October 1999 to May 2002, Charter Communications maintained an upgrade and, and troubleshot ISP network comprised of Cisco, 3Com, Com21, and Bay Networks. Cat5 installed racks in the head ends using power and cable management, responsible for weekly and monthly reports on bandwidth and circuit usage. Test, return cable modems, warranty or redeployment, travel wide coverage area with responsibility for over 12,000 customers. Installed and maintained Cisco AS5300 servers for seven separate dial-up pools. Monitored bandwidth and configured Cisco 7200 routers for bandwidth upgrades for 9,000 customers. And managed relations between cable operator and technicians in Plainfield, Illinois, while training new staff in the technical and administrative positions in January 2001. Check out the software listing, and that's something. Permanently disabled in 2004 for being depressed by our own government. And they closed the door and they said, are you still telepathic? Owing black projects, you know? Well, maybe you don't. <laughs> You're about to find out. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. So, where we're gonna go from here is we're gonna take a walk into the reality of today in 2022. And first, we're going to have a little lesson from the past in my job. When I worked at UW-Whitewater, she has a huge magnet underneath her and a fixed low Earth orbit satellite above her. And during the 70s, UW-Whitewater had a bunch of software 
that was laying around for all those underground Nick Theralonga IBM databases and such, they're underground. That's not a maybe, the, that's, that's a certainty. It has to do with cooling more than anything. So again, as a kid, I'm growing up drawing things like this as they tested brain-brain interface for synthetic telepathy. And people have long since been lied to about that electromagnetic body part. And now we're at a crisis in our country, okay? This is from 1993. And this is how the Zigbee Bluetooth layouts go. This is what they look like. And that's exactly also how they process in telecommunications. And I'm gonna show all of that to you here in a moment. But I wish to point out that they were testing on children. Yeah, that's what our government does. The parents, my parents, they just hand you over. That's their job. It's secret deployment for Synchron? Mm -mm. Nope. Sorry, folks. No. <laughs> I'll come back to that in just a second. So this journey for me really started there with being a kid, skin erection issues, which is really just me having control of all of my physiology. Instead of listening to people around me tell me a story, tell me I'm dumb, run me off from being able to just feel my own body. And growing up from 1979, I have always found it bizarre, unusual, but I, I didn't know. I didn't realize that the heart of surveillance was the human biofield. And once I did, that was not okay. And my family made me go away for almost a decade because I wasn't allowed to say anything, ever. About chakras, <laughs> it's the aura, who cares? In 2019, I had a run-in with a 911 call called an ambulance. And on the phone, the guy in the ambulance, they said, get her to the helipad, take her to the lodge, get her to the farm. Now I'm perfectly disabled by the government it was the first time I called an ambulance. I wasn't prepared for that. And then I knew the military was watching me, and then I knew I'm a tag asset by our Defense Intelligence Agency via my parents, not via me. I'm over here working for Charter. But being able to feel radar and all these other electromagnetic signals, that's natural. The dog reacts the same way I do. They don't tell people that, unless you're in the Marine Corps for situational awareness. Now, Stingray and Dirtbox uses that same body part because it's electromagnetic. And back in 1953, mm, the great uncle, yeah, he brought home a bunch of pictures and uh, electromagnetic drones in 1953. And again, mom and dad, 1969, working on Project Salus, which controls every, every molecular state that we've got going on inside of the human body and out. Now, if you look at Salus now, they're gonna tell you logistics and motion and basically everything internationally by molecule. And you go, that's impossible. That's because you don't know about the nano internet of things, the industrial internet of things, and that many of these machine interface systems, they were around in 1958. So, why? Why wouldn't you tell people? I mean, Edgewood Arsenal, we're testing on our own soldiers. Vietnam with my grandfather again. We've got electromagnetic drones in 1953. What's going on, right? Okay. So I get here to West Virginia and the weirdness with the ambulance and then it continues, more weirdness. Disappearing vehicles, yeah, yeah. So I go down to the post office and they have this question. Oh, we're planning for the county. I'm a homeowner. So I went ahead and went to the link. 6G, newest stuff right here in a town of 200 people, give or take. That seems weird. Hmm. So that got me started researching 6G low pan. And having come from network engineering, and cybersecurity is one of my favorite places because I do math in binary. And I had to because I had to subnet the back end of Space Force's two four dot addresses which went on sale in uh, Florida last year. I found that really interesting, but um, I figured that out too. So anyways, they, um, when you are a network engineer and you're studying for your Cisco certified network associate back in the day, you had to actually subnet in binary because we didn't have enough IP addresses. So yeah, I read binomial math. It's part of my job previously, okay? And so when it comes to cybersecurity, this is the kind of stuff in this first part is totally full of just such boring stuff like the OSI layers and the internet and stuff like that. So again, when you have to subnet and you have to insulate your customers and you're beholden to certain thousands of people, 
and they will nail you for being $300,000 a minute of loss. It's Charter Communications at the time. Then you have to know what you're doing and you cannot be wrong. 300 grand a minute. Yeah, it's gonna crush you under a job like that. Remember, there's only two people in the whole state that can handle that equipment. So you don't get to go on vacations here. Basically got a babysit the whole thing. Okay, so network security, 60 low personal area network. And she is going to be using a machine to machine, meaning no humans involved, in a ad hoc vehicle net, for example. Here's a striker, here's a drum. Now, we've got a couple problems. First of all, you can't interrupt that drum. Pentagon Statement 3000.09 asserts over 11 years ago, and you can find this on CISR4.com, that the Pentagon in May this year, 2022, said, I think that our commanders on the ground need to be able to read the machine learning. Well, clearly the commander, my husband just got home, the commander did not attend the Artificial Intelligence Symposium on September 10th, 2020, if the commander would have, he would know that this was a ner digital nervous system and to end with no humans involved. And I quote, Project Salus, what did we learn? Back to product delivery, give them the code. The Salus platform is used by Northcom with upgrades out to vendors. The game changer is the new neural prototype. Products are in development in about a year or so. What new neural prototype? Synchron, for starters. The Jake, Joint Artificial Intelligence, what? Is, fielding, is a fielding organization, focuses on getting products out the door to people who are actually using it. Then they argued about whether it was gonna be Amazon hybridized networking services or the Jedi, and then Microsoft and Amazon were like, let me have a government contract, okay? But then it got weirder for me, and I'm, as I'm listening, they said, data labeling services, and I'm like, that's a massive database. Data curation, and I'm thinking, on what? Vendor, customers, and I wrote, this is the Department of Defense? So for that, you gotta go over here to the beginning. And it says, oh, the team of the Jake, you mean the Joint Artificial Intelligence Commission? The role of them is to the make AI real and everyone can and should implement artificial intelligence in everything they do. Customers across the DOD. Who are your customers? <laughs> Watch this. So, contracting tools is under the Tradewinds umbrella and Project Maven, and I quote, Pod conduits using smart sensors, biosensors, wireless working group 802.15.5 wireless sensor network, specialized working group for the international standards of electronics and engineering, excuse me, electronics and electrical engineering. And Project Maven uses Pathfinder and AI to watch you walk around and think inside your house in real time and lips. I quote, MQ-9 tethered to ground project. That's Department of Defense Directive 3000.09, which asserted again, that's why the commander was cranky, because he's like, we can't hear these machines, we can't decode them by their nature, and we can't get a signal through. And I quote, over here at the Jake, we're, we need to get the ABMS system of the Air Force more cohesive with everything else, so we're gonna create a digital nervous system. And to end, we need to redo at the DOD how to connect all the ABMS platforms. What do they control? Those ABMS platforms, autonomous vehicles. You mean autonomous drones, tanks, regular strikers, all sorts of things, planes, check. What about anything else? Absolutely, industrial internet of things and those VA nets, they got self-driving vehicles and it's all L-I-D-A-R, but you thought that was only for the smart car. You should look into the RF engineering new way to save the day called the green road, it's not new. Specialized fiber along the interstate. When I was a kid, you just use a little bit of LIDAR and move the mountain aside. That's plasmonics. Again, Special Access Projects, National Institute of Science and Technology for the government. They pay people, this is no joke. They, the, the black projects, remember? Ah, they don't really pay 45 grand for a gold toilet seat. No, they don't. But you know what they do? The NIST hires these poor people to have a stack like this. They have to plug in five codes to hide where all the money goes and the resource allocation and the logistics and the shipping and then the reallocation of special access projects people and then the reallocation of whoever is in charge of guarding them, tracking them, tracing them or the Department of Defense kill list for special access projects modification. It gets out of control. And it's all open source and you can read about it and look it up on Google. So, back to our problem here. So you wanna to explain to me what are these biosensors and what are you talking about an MQ-9 Reaper drone is tethered to my DNA. What is going on? And by the way, DOD, who are your customers? 
Back to cybersecurity. Yeah. Artificial intelligence, first symposium. They told them all, get the humans out of the way. Sorry, I should have quoted that one too. Digital nervous system, end to end. Get these platforms connected. Get the humans out of the process. And into reasoning, enable the commander directly. Using data science, private cells, AI. Since I was a kid, machine interfaced into these quantum databases, Menninger Foundation. Now, why would they do that? <laughs> so the new 6G personal area network is gonna use your body to route the data. And before you think, oh no, they would tell us, this was done in 2005. That's what the wireless sensor network is. The biosensors are physically permanent and lifetime since 2005. And since 2005, with Zigbee and Bluetooth, which is what I complained about before when I said, hey man, I was just a kid. Why does Zigbee and Bluetooth and these biosensors look exactly like this? Because that's how it works. <clears throat> the International Standards for Electronics and Electrical Engineering uses a wide BOD D area network, an 802.15.6 electronic standards for wireless working group, wide body area network, 802.15.6. And these are the four circles of their technical writing of what they're able to do through your body. And as always, you know, we should have no more paraplegics and everything. They can make your hands move. They monitor your muscle tissue density. They can make you talk. They can, and they do right now. They monitor all these things wirelessly. How is that possible if your body needs a wearable? Or are they using your router? Or are they using your switch? As in, well, <laughs> are they using your router? Are they using something else? I wanted to know, so I figured it out. With the newest cybersecurity here with the striker, and she has to be machine to machine, just like the AI symposium at the DID said. The problem is, is that autonomy is an MQ9 tethered to your DNA. And that DNA generates an electromagnetic body part, and nobody knows about that. They call it the aura, they call it all sorts of stuff. Oh, it's UFOs, we don't know. Yes, we do. Skunk Works Raytheon, I just showed you the picture of the drone. People go to work for 40 plus years, get paid really, really well to keep you in the dark. Cybersecurity? No, try, uh, you know, national security. Oh, it's a UFO. No, that's Skunk Works, Raytheon, Lockheed. Everybody knows this. They're vendors. So what's all this stuff about psychic? They're called psionics. They're inherent in human tissue. So there was a book I used to have my students read when I taught about this as a kid. Here it is. In 1996, this book was written. It's called Integral Psychology. And inside, you're going to find... What I just said about telepathy, empathy, precognition, all of it, it's assigned to certain areas of the brain. And so are those sensor networks, down to the nanoscale. Then they put it on a proprietary software when they have to write for Zigbee and Bluetooth for those permanent, lifelong biosensors, 802.15.4. They are permanently affixed in your body. Where? <laughs> The radio frequency sinks, there are two of them. They're gonna pull all the electromagnetic energy, including the potentiation of minerals out of your biochemical bloodstream and transduce them because your electromagnetic field here that you thought was worthless, didn't exist and everyone made fun of you, it actually transduces anything electromagnetically. Now we use synthetic radio, or excuse me, software defined radio, synthetic telepathy, just to agitate your skin a little electromagnetically transduce in and out using your own body part. So how do you think they route computer data? The same way. The biosensors are literal magnets. They are fixed and adjusted with voltage. How? The wireless working group 802.15.5. And that's where your personal area network is. And your personal area network is one more time, as you can see right here, the 6G low pan may or may not have a body area network for security routing purposes. They're routing their data through your tissue, and I quote, and exchange digital information using the electrical conductivity of the human body as a data network, body area network. So why don't we need a brain chip? Because you've been wireless for 6,000 years. Chinese medicine, the meridians, chakras those are nodal points on your body electromagnetic telemetry so the permanent biosensors were rolled out to everybody up here in 802.15.4 and they had to be permanent for Zigbee and Bluetooth and that is who provides them 
And then the wireless working group 802.15.5 takes care of all the different types of networks, then collects certain sensors from only certain bodies, open shortest path first routing protocols or security driven reasons. But they also, when they create them with Zigbee and Bluetooth, they have to select muscle tissue type since 2008. They have to select heat so you don't swell to death. And so they were working on that until 2011 and 2013. And now they have about 13 different routing protocols, but only about three of them are built to protect you from the inflammation you incur by routing data through your body, which pulls minerals from your red blood cells to do so. Now it's a very minute level, so you don't notice until too many companies are pulling on those statistics mathematically at the same time. And here's what that looks like. So right here in our little example, you may also want to note that these two RF sinks each have five nodes sticking out of them. I have them labeled right here as N1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for every little dot, you got five more. And they're all electromagnetically accessible through the cloud commercially with Zigbee and Bluetooth, which again is the IEEE 802.15.4, because if they weren't, they couldn't sell Zigbee and Bluetooth in the wall. They couldn't have using the Alexa that way. All these different things communicate with these sensor networks. And they're all driven by artificial intelligence databases and they're all interlocked. So if you are wireless and you're on the same wireless working group as your phone, which is IEEE 802.1, so in a wide personal area network, they're routing their data through you since 2005 and I can write an app for it and then I can play with you like the same. Because these here are accessible since 2005. You think people haven't had enough time to buy synthetic telepathy wearables? It's all written. And if you didn't know how, writing an app is not hard. And they GitHub style it up with something called Structured Query Language Hive. What's SQL? It's the back end of Microsoft Apache and WordPress. And SQL Hive is the Hadoop loop style. So these people in the 90s, before this was rolled out in 2005, and by these people, I mean my parents, secret squirrels, secret law enforcement, all this stuff, for again, for who again? Space Force, yep, since 1969, signals intelligence, etc. Okay, so they have something called brain brain interface, a synthetic telepathy, and it's frequency driven peer to peer. Yeah, and they put on a helmet at their desk and they can cruise right through human tissue. Again, these things are monitored in real time. Now, as if that wasn't bad enough, they also have you by all the collection databases that you see listed here CATV, all of your census stuff. Radar, Doppler, and then the dirt boxes fly above your head and they communicate with the Stingray software, which is written for individual sheriff's departments depending on what type of databases they pay to subscribe to. So what you end up with is, here's three bodies walking along the road. There's two bodies in a house. These bodies are now being utilized by that same driver because their bodies just happen to have the best security and the machine to machine only uses those criterion, and they're listed if you want to read through the machine learning, you can watch the order and then the heat and the separation of how many times they hit the node, how long they wait, 0 0.06 second delay, and it's the same in cybersecurity for everything. Hello, goodbye, intermittent wait state. And if you know anything about data hacking with packets for real and not just the software defined enterprise cloud stuff, meaning you're mainly using software, I mean like the hardware side, they pull the whole packet apart down to the physical MAC address layer of your body. That's the problem we're in. That's why we're down to the wire here. They're wired into your bone marrow. And the way that 6G Lopan powers everything around them in the smart grid is when you walk, when you dance, and when you move. And that's another portion you can read about in 802.15.5 and wide body area networks, 802.15.6. So again, the problem we run into is that when you got three bodies walking down the road, these two are now firing tons of signals. I told you every node is five more. Now all these sensors are going crazy. This person here, the machine selects this person here. The DNA, your DNA, your body. That is what creates the secure signal that the drone is using. It is propagating your DNA and that is exactly how it works. So in order to stop this drone from firing anything, you have to stop your DNA from propagating. Why would they do that? So, one last time, if you're unlucky enough and somebody gets hit with a bioweapon, this is electrical transduction over the open wireless working group of wide body area networks. So it doesn't matter what you believe in, and it never did, 
They did all that right here, UFOs, psychic, and then when they transduce humans and they do actual testing, which is wireless tissue engineering and wireless total piezoelectric control, neural mitigation for behavioral modulation. We brain damage you in very subtle nanoscale areas of your brain to keep your behavior under control. Then we send you to people and tell you cognitive behavioral therapy will help you. In Kubernetes, artificial intelligence programming, we know if you say it over and over again, you're gonna do it. So why wouldn't they fix your epigenetic environment? Because they're not interested in that. Or they would have told people about this stuff a long time ago. They were studying transport, then they would test people for for their psionic abilities into bioinformatics and genomics. Once your body could no longer transduce these electromagnetic signals, because it's unnatural, and it's too much power in the bloodstream and the bone, and your vascular system going, Eventually, it weakens the veins, the arteries, the skin, and then you're in trouble. So are you encrypted? Did you get lost in the woods? Did you go underground? You think I'm kidding? (laughs) So this is what they did. Nobody told the truth. Stingray and law enforcement was all wrapped up in 1972, so I was used by the police chief with my brain, or excuse me, my machine body interface at the time, because they still had to have a SCSI cable with nanolipid or hydrogel so that they could go through and show it on a monitor. That's what all those scars are. So now everybody's wired since 2005 and available commercially. And again, the newest standard for cybersecurity is a wide body area network, which may or may not be involved in a personal area network, which may or may not involve your iPad and your all the rest of it. The cybersecurity right here, February 2022 for the 6G low pen, digital ID routing. And the digital ID is made of your bone, that's right. Frequency and resonance of your what? Your DNA generated, electromagnetic, wirelessly accessible since 2005, commercially, body part. They never let you know about, your doctor won't admit to it, no one will talk about it, and if you try, they'll make fun of you. (laughs) Why? Don't you want total control of humans and have them on remotes to make them do whatever you want? No free will, no ability to think, I told you. Neural mitigation with subtle, what again? Behavioral modification. One more time. Vital signs, respiration, EC, ECG monitoring, pH monitor, glucose, hearing aid. What are the non-medical uses of what they're putting through your bone? Because when they do, your red blood cells have to operate to the routing and they will magnetically pull those, excuse me, those minerals, pardon my shoulder, right out of your bloodstream. Well, video streaming, data file transfer, sports, 3D video, forgotten things, monitor. And then, one more time, you will be allowed to do three things entertainment applications, P-O-R-N, gaming and social networking. Starting to see how the metaverse, electroceuticals, the internet of things, the internet of bodies, the cyber internet of things, it's all tied together inside your bone marrow. Yeah. So when I tried to tell people, hi, I'm from Black Projects, and you gotta understand, dude, this is a body part, and if you don't start working with it, and you don't start figuring it out, this is drone warfare, it ain't gonna wait on you, it ain't gonna wait on nobody. So what you have to do is understand that the only thing you have right now It's physiology first, which is to admit it's the body part. They hit it for total human enslavement. And they have it. This isn't a maybe, it's all done. And the police department and the sheriff's departments, like I said, they're finished in 1972. Being able to talk to each other with synthetic telepathy and a bunch of little kids. (laughs) And then when we were teenagers, here came the rest of it with the 2013 was when they actually rolled out brain chip interface professionally. People still don't know that. They still think you need an actual chip in your brain. You don't. You just go buy a nano antenna with the right frequency for the wide body area network. It's like a hundred bucks. And then you buy a $200 synthetic telepathy generating wearable that just goes inside your cranial nerves just subtly and allows you to hear all the signals around you that are projecting on these networks. These networks are connected to everything on the Internet of Things, the Industrial Internet of Things, Cyber, Nano, Internet of Bodies. I made fun of the Internet of Bodies because I'm like, guys, if you don't know the specificity, then you have to because then they said, oh, but it's only in hospitals. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's as silly as, I mean, I mean, this is an engineered design. Why would we leave it only in the hospital? I mean, it wouldn't even function that way. It's completely wireless, satellite inclusive. So at that drone, chooses your DNA, because that MQ-9 has been tethered to you, remember? I just pointed this out a moment ago, it said MQ-9, September 10th, 2020, Artificial Intelligence Pentagon. 
MQ9 tethered to ground Project Maven, Project Pathfinder with object detection. That's right. And a cognitive body area network, which I'll be coming back with these because they use something called an adversarial neural network. And they attack you. That's right. Because they're watching you think with those C-bands. Cognitive. For cognitive radar. Watching you think in real time. And it shows up on a little tiny iPad. And they click a button. And you got a heart attack and a stroke. Or anything they want. Any molecule. Any PHAGE state. Any phase state. It's all available to them. Since 2005? Oh, bare minimum. My parents had pro this Project Salus in 1969. Every molecule on the planet. Everywhere. So... How did we get here? How did all this get in place? No mental accountability, no mendacity, nothing. We just let, let them get away with it. First, they were subtly electrocuting. A lot of people got fibromyalgia, but nobody knew why. Pseudotumors. You have a tumor, but we can't physically find it. It's just your brain is acting like it. Then pseudo seizures. Oh gosh, we don't know why you're having so many seizures. Then lupus, Garrick's disease, and all autoimmune. 80% of your immune system is in that invisible body part. And 40 to 60 percent of your endocrine systems. So that's why all the hormones can never get under control. You keep screwing with the electrical transduction of the basic cell structure of your largest organ. Come on, people. And then nano diseases. Oh, I don't know what that is. They do. The World Health Organization admitted to that. Cancer is not my story to tell, which is why I leave it open. Because a lot of people already figured this out with cancer. They're like, wait, I'm sick, and now you want me to take chemo? Like, what? And yeah, so not my story to tell. And now we're all the way down here into sudden adult death syndrome. Oh, gee, we don't know why. And when they move around too much and have oxygen transducing the red blood cells too much, there happens to be too much radar from Amazon shipping services. There's too much radar from just regular companies for security. Maybe it's just a regular company that's dredging geology or the top of a rock set, uh, whatever. But now it's pulling from your body to scan the area. Again, it's just part of the wireless sensor working group up here of the 802.1, 5.5, and 0.4. But now it's using your body because you are in the 802.1, 5.6. And for our purposes for this, instead of the striker, that's a satellite and she needs your body. In 802.1, 5.6. Those are permanent lifetime sensors since 2005 commercially available. And the DoD is selling curated database access to you using our same census and Doppler and heat and light and where you live and who you talk to. Which is why the whole reason that led me here was when I realized that my county, whoever it is that I live near, my little town of 200, is looking through my bloodstream, a 6G low pan, and that freaked me out. I followed a link and I did the reading. So, nationwide, and again, this is 2022, February, for digital ID, jumping a geofence and catching people so they can't leave their geofence. Why didn't anybody tell you you were wireless? Because they don't want to give you the remote control to your own body. So what are you going to do about it when the radar comes at you and she's ready with your DNA to end you? Because that's the lethal autonomous weapon statement I kept reading out of that college textbook. Yeah. So you can't hear it, right? Your body won't hear it coming, whether it's drone or transductive. That's a lie. On my channel in Odyssey, it's full of electromagnetic warfare survivors, people like myself that this stuff was tested on and then implemented at the industrial government scale for the Defense Intelligence Agency, the NRO, or whoever. And what you've got to understand now is that you've, you're out of time because they're going to war. And they've been at this since 2005, and again, my family was in in 1969. So here on my channel, I teach biofield practice. I teach offensive and defensive. Defensive is great because then you're opening yourself around inside your own field and you're learning how to actually listen and breathe. But offensive biofield practice came last week. And I heavily suggest that you observe it before you try it and before you do anything. Get familiar with your body again and correct all the things they taught you wrong so that they could access you with the remote, take away your immune system because what's gonna happen is the plasma charges, and if you watch ADAPT 2030, he talks about this, those plasma charges, yeah, that's your electromagnetic body part. You're gonna feel it either way. But if you have knowledge ahead of time, you're not gonna be afraid, and you're gonna be better prepared to observe your environment, topologically, epigenetically, and really understand that people who are complicit in all this stuff that's really evil, they will tell you your biofield's not real or they won't talk about it, and then if they're involved in about two thirds, I'd say, pardon my face, of this country is involved, They'll just pretend it doesn't matter and that, oh, it can't affect me. 
I believe this is the center of the male revolution they're trying on our country because our youth biohack with this stuff and they know how easy it is to purchase that 300 bucks and have telepathy and affect people. And in Hollywood, they've been doing it for a long time. Well, now they've taken it a step further with tissue engineering transmogrification. And I said to people, I'm like, they're going to turn the bottom of your arm into a fish flipper. And they're like, no, they're not. And I said, yeah, they are. And so now it's here. There are doctors out there that are offering to change people's DNA and alter them into animal states, etc. Yeah, we know. That's what mRNA plays a part in. Okay? So step one, you've got to get honest about your physiology. You have an invisible body part, and everybody knows except you. That's a problem. Why? Because it's your body. It's that simple. whole body instantly now project that field see how much force that was whole body just take a look what the biofield actually looks like it's electromagnetic energy isn't it mm -hmm. that drone's coming you're gonna feel it your body naturally does algorithm seeing through the birds all that stuff notes ley lines the military's been using them a long time why well, didn't you know why aren't you allowed to know? Step one, it's your body part. Step two, get right with God. Prayerful people who are like, I don't want Jesus. Okay, well, whatever you want, physiology first, it's a body part. Then get right with God. Prayerful people, just to represent all forms of love. Then practice, religions, whatever. Okay. Notice how I separated that. Whatever you believe in is the deity that loves you, knowing that there's something greater out there than yourself. That's private. That's personal. You are a soul sovereign, a being in your skin suit here. Okay. So for anyone to have sewn magnets with voltage adjustment, then handed it out to law enforcement and secret surveillance, but no doctors, no nothing for how many years? Then all of a sudden after COVID, oh, it's Project Salus. And I'm going... Oh my God, we're in so much trouble. Holy cats, dogs, and goldfish. And that's when I got really mouthy this year in April. And I said, Bubba Bubba bitch, here's your veins and arteries. They're flowing just fine. No, they're not. Look at how much effort that is. Boop. Watch how much effort this is. Watch carefully. And then go view what the biofield looks like when it fully expands, okay? I'm twisted, hang on. Doomed. <laughs> You're not pulling a trigger. You will be damn lucky if you can even get Tim Medor. And by the way, precognition, again, that book I showed you, spiders eat with it. So why are you still pretending that you are not in their defense intelligence agency Pentagon databases with every dream that you have and that your precognition is also watched? Because it's in your tissue. That's why spiders eat with it. Same way with the algorithm. It's all natural. And everybody's always like, oh, I love being in nature. Why all these wires and things? So pretty soon they're going to go away. And most people didn't know that uh, we had all this, gravitonics, plasmonics, and all the rest of it. We had it in the 1800s, and they took it away for 150 years so they could sell you back your immune system and lock you up. And now they have. If you don't have your biofield, in the upcoming electromagnetic warfare, you will not survive. It's that simple. So your chances now, and you don't have much time. 1953. What do you think they got now? You. Amen.